Hello Internet! In this video we are going to be working on Conway's Game of Life. Uh, so the Game of Life or Conway's Game of Life is a mathematical problem uh, designed to create a repeating structure, uh, so a, repeating, a repeatable pattern inside of some sort of strongly defined logic. Uh, so the way this works is it's a 2D grid uh, that will have some sort of definition. So uh, that's not going to work. That's too small. Anyway, uh, think of it like there's uh, a cellular organism. There's alive cells and there's dead cells. And those are each represented by pixels. Uh, and so there's a set of four rules that define whether a living cell will die uh, or if a dead cell will become alive. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we are going to extend a pixel sh or a compute shader I have and actually make it simulate the game of life. Uh, so this here, this blurred thing, is actually an iterative uh, blur algorithm. So what it's doing is it's taking the adjacent eight pixels, so all the diagonals and the uh, other adjacent ones, plus the current pixel, and then it's taking all the sum of that, dividing it by nine and getting a value, and then it just does that recursively. Uh, so it just keeps doing that every frame. Uh, so this is what I call the, the Bieber beaver. Um, I've got a few other things, like I've got this dog here, and I can just plug them in. And then you'll see how it look. It comes in, in focus and then it blurs out over time. Uh, and that's because we have this loop. Uh, if I go into here, uh, I've already kind of written this because this is not really strictly relevant to what we're doing. Uh, but the code will be available online if you want to check it out. Uh, so what this is doing is it's taking a, a render texture and actually sending it through our compute shader. If you want to see how that's going to work, how compute shader is like basic intro, I have a video on that. I'll link it somewhere up there or in the description, either one, up to you. Uh, so what this is doing is it's taking an input texture, a width and a height, so we can actually figure out the pixels. Uh, and then it's creating a new render texture of that size, and that is going to be the result. So we're taking some input, rendering it into the result, and then at the end, once we have calculated that, we actually set the input for the next frame as the result. Uh, and so that just keeps looping over and over. And it just keeps getting more and more blurred until eventually it reaches an equilibrium where that division that we're doing actually equals the same thing. So it actually co starts coming back out to the same value. And that's just due to uh, pixels getting too close and things like that. It's just math. <laughs> So this is the compute shader we're using. Uh, right now it takes a width, a height, an input, and then it has a result that it kicks out, which is just the render texture. Uh, we're using the default number of threads. I didn't change any of that. Uh, and everything else is the same. The only difference is the name, which is the game of life. Uh, so what we're doing is first we're calculating the actual position in pixel space. Uh, so normally we'd have UV space, which would be between 0 and 1. We don't want that. Uh, I want to, well actually I do want that, sorry, but I want to be able to get the pi specific pixel uh, for the one we're rendering. So we have an X and a Y position inside of our model. I want to convert that into pixel space or into UV space. And so this kind of helps us do that. It, assuming the width actually defines the number of pixels wide our model or our texture is, that way we can actually calculate where it is. And then we also do this again uh, this pixel size actually calculates the actual width of everything. Uh, and so that ends up getting us both a single step, so we can step one pixel to any side. Uh, and then it also gets us the actual position in world space. And then since our, uh, since our textures are all repeating, which means that the UV coordinates will wrap instead of clamping. So there's two ways to do it. You can either clamp, which means say you're at uh, position one in your UV, which would be at the very tip of your texture. If you step further, uh, there's two things that can happen. You can either wrap around the texture and end up on the other side, or you can just keep extending that final pixel into infinity. Uh, so if you want to do like a single, like transparent dot in the middle of your screen, you would you would cl you would clamp that so that it, it doesn't extend off. You can make it smaller, but it doesn't actually repeat or anything. Uh, alternatively, if you repeat it, like we're doing it'll actually wrap around. So you can actually get uh, effects that will kind of transition across. Uh, if you've ever played Asteroids, 
it does exactly the same thing. It wraps around when you get off one side and comes to the other side. So we have a current pixel here. Uh, so this just gets the current pixel at our position. And then these next eight are just summing up. So they're all being added to the neighbor pixels. Uh, and we're taking the position plus our, our sides and then doing all eight adjacent pixels. So once that's done, we just take the entire sum. So we add on the current pixel and then divide by nine, which is the total num value. So we get this, which is just a really simple way to do blur, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this. This is probably not the best way to do blur because a single step is not, it's not going to get you much. But uh, well, blur wasn't really the goal here. We want to do Conway's Game of Life. Uh, so at the top here, I have the four rules listed out. Uh, and they are any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies, as if caused by underpopulation. Uh, the second one, any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation. The third one is any live cell with more than three neighbors dies, as if by overpopulation. And then finally, the fourth one applies to dead cells. That's when any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell, as if by reproduction. So if a dead cell has three adjacent neighbor tiles, exactly three, then it becomes, it reproduces and that cell becomes alive. Uh, so with these four, we can actually create a bunch of cool things. I have two actual samples from the game. Uh, but the cool thing is, is I think we can actually plug models into this. And I think we should still be able to get things to actually come out of it. I don't think it'll be useful, <laughs> but we're going to find out because I'm kind of curious about that. So what we need to do is this neighbor pixels, uh, if I take out this final bit, actually it represents the total number of neighboring pixels. Uh, assuming we're doing white and black. So if black is dead and white is alive, uh, we can actually get the number of adjacent living cells just by looking at, say, the red value, assuming we're all white. Uh, so any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies. Uh, the easiest way to do this I've kind of been considering is skip all the crazy math uh, and do this the easy way. Uh, so you can either, you can do jumping statements like I'm gonna do uh, using ifs. Usually that's a bad idea in graphics shaders. Uh, GPUs really like linear execution. They don't like jumping around in your program. Uh, and that's exactly what an if statement does. So if you can avoid jumps, you'll get better execution. Uh, but we're not going to do that uh, just because it's a lot harder to follow if I don't. Uh, so let's start with these three. So uh, we'll actually start with number two, I think, uh, because if you look at it, number one and number two or number one, and number three are actually the uh, opposite of this. So effectively, number two and then one in three, if we just do an else, we'll fall in with that. So if our pixel is live, so if our current pixel uh, dot r is greater than, I'm going to give it some uh, leeway, so 0.5. Uh, so just in case we don't get a perfect uh, sample, like if there's some grays or something, by doing 0.5, I'm by giving everything off by 0.5, I'm kind of hoping... I don't know if this will work or not, but I'm kind of hoping that we avoid some of those weird things uh, just due to floating point errors and things like that. Uh, so that will handle the, once we get into here, we know it's alive. Then we want to check if our neighbor pixels is greater than 1.5. So two minus 0.5 would be 1.5 and the neighbor pixels is less than 3.5. So this will be between two and three. I'll just comment that here. Between two and three. I already did that, there we go. Otherwise, it's not, which means this will be uh, either below two, which will be here, less than two. And this one will be greater than three, which will be handled here as well. So both of those get, uh, effectively dropped into here and so we can just set our result here result x y equals neighbor oops that's not what i want uh, we want to float for 
Uh, this is storing float fours. Um, we're just going to drop in 0, 0, 0, 001. Uh, we're going to make sure everything stays opaque. Uh, otherwise, it just will get weird. Uh, but that should be everything that we need. So everything else, or this one, we want to actually make it come alive. Like so. And then I think that's that's it. All we have to do now is that other alternative. So if it's dead, uh, we have to, with exactly three live neighbors, becomes a live cell. So if there's three, which we can do this again, uh, neighbor pixels greater than uh, 1.5. Did it say exactly three? Exactly three. So 2.5, sorry. And less than uh, 3.5, which will be uh, equal to three. So if that's the case, then we want to create a live cell. So id.xy, set that equal to r 1111. Uh, we should actually spell that correctly. There we go. And then our else statement here, results xy, uh, and then we will kill it. So 0, 0, oops, float 4, 0, 0, 0, 1. And that should be it. That's That should cover all of our cases. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced that that'll work, but we'll find out soon. So let's see what happens if I just, oops, something's broke. Must evaluate as a scalar. Oh, ha. These need to be dot x or dot r. We need to look at the, the red value or any value. We could do uh, green or blue here because we're just doing uh, expecting it to be white. Uh, I always just use r, uh, the red value, just because it, it, it's just habit. And I if I always use the same one, I, it's harder to forget. Uh, you can also use like any of them. It, it's your choice. I, I'd use red. Undeclared identifier neighbor pixels. What? Oh, spelling. There we go. So now if I clear that, we should. Uh, so I have a glider here, which is sort of like the big test, I guess, for it. Uh, so if this works, we need it to actually have the same uh, width and height as our actual texture for this. Uh, but this glider, uh, if I pause this and start, will it skip us? Uh, yeah, it did. But so this isn't exactly the texture, but it's close enough. Uh, so these, this is a pattern that should, uh, if the pattern is correct, it should cause it to uh, constantly travel down into the right. Uh, so if I keep stepping. If I just turn it on, yeah, we get that. So this is a, a glider, uh, and you can see it. It's constantly going uh, to the right. There's, I think, six sta stages to it. Uh, so if you follow that, this one, that's a repeat, I think. Or this will be easier to track, actually. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So six stages, uh, if you count this one. So. That's the glider. Uh, so if I unpause this, it keeps going. Uh, the issue is this is going to be happening at 500 frames a second, which is why it looks very fast. Um, but the, that's one of the advantages, I guess, of a compute shader is it is going to be speedy quick uh, because all of these pixels are being done concurrently. And because of that, uh, it's actually super fast. Uh, we're we're kind of screwing that whole thing up uh, because I'm actually discarding that memory and actually replacing it every single time on the GPU, which is a really bad practice. Uh, that's due entirely to this. Uh, this is actually resetting a new thing. I should actually be like double buffering it and switching them back and forth, but I'm not, uh, and that's bad. So because of that, we d it is a little bit slower. Uh, we could probably fix that, but that wasn't really the goal here. It was more an application of compute shaders. Uh, so I've got a more fun one that I pulled off the internet. This one is 512 by 512. Uh, and so the reason we have to get these uh, pixel sizes correct 
is because if they're not, uh, what will happen is it will the whole thing will kind of get uh, screwed up. It won't be able to find what it's looking for. This is interesting. I I had no idea what this was actually supposed to look like, uh, and maybe this is wrong. Uh, looks like we've got some like exploders up here, which would be these. Uh, and some sort of like generator is going on. Th so there's a few there's a few structures in this game or in this the game of life that kind of like generate a few gliders and things like that. Uh, and I think some of them are doing it. I think that's kind of the point. Maybe this is all just random. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. Uh, uh, let's try something really interesting. If I plug the dog in, whoa, that is. <laughs> what is that? Okay, this is cool. So we can actually plug any image in, uh, and just based off of the math, it actually kind of does its thing. But the coolest thing, the thing that I'm noticing, is if this first step, that looks super cool. Because you can still see the dog. So the dog is chasing a tennis ball, which you can see down here, in a pool, which you can kind of see the splashes there. But then it, like, gets outlined, and then... There is some like cool lines or something that come in from the sides and then it just does that and now the dog's gone. That's really cool. I wonder if we could use that for something. Because I, I wasn't expecting the effect to be that cool. Like, what about the beaver beaver? Ah, uh, no, you're not as interesting. What about the World of Zero logo? Meh. That was kind of cool, I guess. We got a, like a few gliders out of it, I guess. But nah, that wasn't that wasn't super intriguing. Uh, <laughs> the the world we created with our our double shaded thing does absolutely nothing. I don't think the colors are bright enough. What if I make this glider huge? What happens then? Ooh. Something didn't like that. I, maybe that's another program being crazy. Uh, I've been having weird like lag issues. Uh, and it looks like I'm getting some lag now. What the heck? Stop, you. Uh, that was kind of weird. I don't know what why that would cause it to lag. But it did. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a problem with all of the garbage collection and the GPU just hating me for cycling out of its uh, texture space. Anyway, that is Conway's Game of Life. Uh, let's go back to this. So what this is do, it, it's it's simple, it's four things, but it, it it's a different use of compute shaders than you would normally get. Uh, and it actually runs really well. Uh -huh. So I'm sure there's other things we can do with these. Uh, like I'm, I've been trying to get it to work with uh, voxel terrain. I've been kind of putting that off more and more, uh, partially because we did like 13 episodes of that in the span of like three weeks, and I kind of just wanted to like expand and do other things for a while, uh, but also uh, that's going to be a little bit more advanced, and I kind of want to like optimize it a little bit first, because I think that's where it's really going to shine, is I think we can use this to do a like per pixel destruction on a giant voxel terrain. And I think it will be super fast. I just need to prove to myself that that will actually work, which I haven't done yet. <laughs> so that's coming, uh, hopefully within the next week or two. Uh, but now that we have, like I, this is kind of me learning compute shaders, uh, but it works. Uh, and hopefully you guys are learning something too. I, there's not much on this. Uh, I, I haven't been able to find much on compute shaders, so hopefully you guys are interested in learning this. I mean, you're, you're watching the video, so <laughs> I'd hope so. Uh, but yeah, if there's anything else you guys want to see with these or if you just have questions about it, let me know because uh, maybe maybe we can make a video about it. Uh, but if there's anything you guys want me to change, to improve on, let me know because that's, that's how I learn. Uh, but until next time, See you, Internet.